This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max. Today, I am super excited to be bringing you guys a comparison between the brand new 2020 MacBook Air and the mid-2019 base model MacBook Pro that has been an excellent value MacBook that we have been highly recommending. And we're gonna figure out which one of these machines is the best value for most people. Now, we're not only gonna be talking about specs and performance for the CPU and the graphics, which are are important, but we're also gonna look at things such as the keyboard, the speakers, webcams, microphones, displays. We're gonna look at video editing performance, some gaming, and also we're gonna look at thermals. And I'll show you guys the insides of these two machines. We're gonna test how hot they get and what is their performance under load. So let's get right into it. Now, as I stack these up, I do wanna say that we have links to both of these down in the video description below, both the new models and also very good discounts and also some refurbished ones. So if you guys are looking to buy, definitely go and check that out. And that helps support our channel. It helps us to keep making videos like these ones, especially when we're stuck at home being quarantined here. So you guys can see that these machines basically look identical if I just stack them on top of each other. The footprint is the same. And if we look at the back over here, it really looks identical. Now, what is different is when we look at the front, the MacBook Air has its classic wedge shape that I personally really like, whereas the MacBook Pro has its standard, uh, kind of more of a boxy squarish design. And then if we look from the side over here, you guys will see that little wedge cut out. And that makes the MacBook a little bit more comfortable in the hand to hold. It makes it feel like it's kind of thinner and smaller. That was a very smart design, de design decision by Apple when they designed the first one. Whereas the MacBook Pro definitely does feel chunkier. Now, as far as weight differences, this one comes in at uh, three pounds, the MacBook Pro, whereas the MacBook Air, it got slightly heavier for 2020, 2.8 pounds. So in all reality, there really isn't much of a difference um, on the exterior. Now, both these models also have two Thunderbolt about three ports that run at full speed, 40 gigabit per second, and then also a headphone jack. If you take a quick glance at the insides, you might not notice a difference right away, but the MacBook Pro, even the base model, does have the touch bar. And I know some people like them, a lot of people don't like them. Uh, personally, I don't use mine that often other than the built-in commands. Both of these machines do have Touch ID built-in, which works very well. And then if we look down lower, you'll see that the MacBook Pro's trackpad is slightly larger. Now, I have no issues with the MacBook Air's trackpad. It is plenty big enough, it doesn't limit you whatsoever. Whatsoever, so that is not a complaint. And then looking above, you might notice some differences in the keyboard. Now this uses the same new Magic Keyboard as Apple calls it from the 16 inch MacBook Pro and I absolutely love that keyboard. Now I wasn't a huge hater of the butterfly keys. They are larger than the previous ones. They're more tactile, they're very stable. Now basically what Apple did is took this design and then put in a scissor mechanism with better travel. So this is the best of both worlds from Apple's old keyboards and the butterflies combined. And what most people care about is long-term reliability and you definitely know that you're not gonna have any issues with this new one. Now I will say that this MacBook Pro does use the latest version of the butterfly keyboard and I have not heard any issues with that. Both of these laptops use 720p FaceTime cameras and this is the quality from the new 2020 MacBook Air. And this is the base 2019 MacBook Pro's webcam and microphone quality. You guys go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below which one looks and sounds better if you guys could tell a difference. Now let's talk about the displays. Both of these are high quality, high resolution retina displays. We have the same exact size, the same resolution, but we do have some differences. The MacBook Air gets around 350 to maybe 400 nits of brightness, whereas the MacBook Pro can output 500 nits and that will help out if you're in bright rooms maybe outside you're battling some reflectivity now there's one other difference and that is the color gamut the macbook air can do very well for srgb so if you're doing standard jpeg photos you want to edit those you're going to have good color accuracy but the macbook pro can actually display dci p3 colors which means it's just more colors that can show off you guys see this logo right here is actually showing up whereas on the macbook air that color cannot be displayed so we're not seeing that how big of a deal is that well I think for most people it really doesn't matter personally if I was doing things like video editing and especially for HDR where you're gonna be doing 10-bit I would say definitely you would want the MacBook Pro's display 
Now it's time to compare the speakers. You guys put on your best pair of headphones and I want you guys to listen to both and let me know what differences you hear down in the comment section below. So I'll give you guys my opinions. The MacBook Pro does have the better speakers. It is louder, the bass sounds better, and the highs are much more crisp and sharp. If you want the best speakers, definitely go for the MacBook Pro, but I will say that the MacBook Air is not a slouch. The speakers still sound good, better than most Windows laptops that I've tested. Um, it's gonna be interesting comparing it to the Surface Laptop 3 because that has a great speaker system and I absolutely love that Windows laptop. So make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications enabled if you guys wanna see that comparison. Now we are gonna be moving on to performance tests. This is gonna get very, very interesting interesting. But first, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making a new website or replacing your old one, now is the time and Squarespace is the best option. Even if you've had no web making experience, all you do is choose a template, customize blocks of text and images, and easily move them around. It's incredibly simple, affordable, and ours has been running for over two years now, bringing in new clients thanks to its built-in SEO tools. So whether you're making a website for a small business or literally anything else go to squarespace.com slash max tech or use our custom link below and start your free no credit card required two-week trial and when you're ready to launch you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain and now let's test out the SSD performance. As I mentioned, this is a base model uh, MacBook Pro. So it has 128 gig SSD. Uh, the read performance is very similar, but the write performance, the MacBook Air is, oh man, almost three times faster. Now that is because we do have a 128 gig. If you went out and you got a 256 gig version of the MacBook Pro, then it would be pretty much matching up as far as SSDs. And now let's get into performance. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this geek Bench 5 test, and as it's running, I'll give you guys the specs. Now, this MacBook Pro is the base model. It has eight gigabytes of low power DDR3, has a 1.4 gigahertz quad core i5 processor, and that goes up to 3.9 gigahertz. Now, with this MacBook Air, because Apple dropped the prices and they're giving us a better value, I went up to an i5 from the i3. That gives us a quad core processor that starts at 1.1 gigahertz and goes up to 3.5. Now, I would say for almost anybody that's buying a MacBook Air, spend that extra $100 because your performance is gonna get much better. Not only that, but graphics as well, so it's well worth it. Now, the other difference is that the MacBook Pro uses an eighth generation Intel processor, whereas this MacBook Air is the first Mac to use a 10th generation processor. And here we have a result, and I was not expecting this. Now, as far as multi-core score, the MacBook Pro, which has a higher frequency processor and better cooling, um, this gets 22% higher multi-core score, which I was expecting, but what I wasn't was that the MacBook Air would get a 26% higher single core score. This MacBook Air has a faster and higher single core score than my 12 core Mac Pro. It, it, is, it is really good. And this means that if you're doing simple tasks like web browsing, opening up tabs, new applications, it's gonna be very snappy. And now let's switch over to the graphics. I'm gonna be running the metal test. If you're getting the i5 processor, you're gonna get the same exact graphics as the i7 version. Okay, wow. I was not expecting this big of a difference. Both have Iris Plus graphics. This has 10th gen. The MacBook Air is basically scoring three times as high as the MacBook Pro in metal. Man, that, that's getting me very interested in the Final Cut test. Uh, but first, this is Unigen Heaven using the Extreme preset. And this is gonna get interesting because it's gonna be putting a lot of heat on the GPUs, a more consistent load. And wow, another thing that I did not expect. So for gaming, when you're pushing the graphics to the max for an extended period of time, the MacBook Pro graphics are actually faster. We got 10.6 FPS compared to 9.0. 
that is interesting. And then if I look at the graphics temperatures, this one, the MacBook Air is running at 81 Celsius compared to 76. So even though the graphics chip itself isn't getting too hot, the CPU is putting out a bunch of heat altogether, and that means it has to slow down. I think now is the perfect time to get into thermal performance. So first off, the fans are not being maxed out on either one of these systems. 7,100 RPMs, but it can go all the way up to uh, 8,000. So the fan does run faster, but the fan running faster isn't gonna make a difference because if you guys look at these shots right here, you'll see that the MacBook Air, the new one, just like the old ones, the heatsink is not connected to the actual fan. So it does draw air in and the, the actual cooler has been redesigned to have these little chambers, but without any heat pipes, it cannot do that good of a job cooling down. I have Cinebench R20 open here, which is gonna put a huge load on all of the cores with the CPU and then Intel Power Gap so we can see what's happening with our wattage, with our temperatures, and with our frequencies. Let's go ahead and click start for our multi-core test. And right off the bat, this hit 3.5 gigahertz compared to the MacBook, uh, MacBook Pro hitting 3.9 gigahertz. And as soon as our test starts, we are down to 2.4. MacBook Air is slowing down faster. It's already hit 100 degrees Celsius compared to 78. The i5 10th gen in the MacBook Air is actually a wide processor, so it's designed to be ultra efficient, low power usage. And even though it did spike up to 25 watts, it didn't stay there very long, whereas this is running right now at 26, 28. The CPU is running still at three gigahertz. And the MacBook Air settled at 1.5 gigahertz, around 10, 11 watts. So this is where thermal performance and having a heat sink that's actually connected to the fan comes into play. That means that even though the MacBook Pro is only 22% faster in Geekbench 5's multi-core score, if you're gonna be putting a 100% load on all of the cores for an extended period of time, because of thermals, the MacBook Pro is 65% faster. And now I'm very curious about video editing. So I have Final Cut open in front of me. I'm going to do just a few tests, but if you guys want a more detailed video on how the 2020 MacBook Air handles video editing, go ahead and check out the link in the video description to my other channel where I'll do a video just on that. Now starting out here, I have uh, two clips open side by side. This is a 20 second 4K clip. I'm going to test out stabilization, which is going to test the graphics performance for video editing. I'm going to click here. Hit start. It's been 20 seconds and so far the MacBook Air is ahead at 60% compared to 43. Now it is starting to heat up a bit, so it should be slowing down a little bit as far as graphics. It got done in 35 seconds, whereas the MacBook Pro is still at 63 degrees Celsius. It's not heating up at all when we're doing this task. 45 seconds, so 10 seconds slower. Next, I have a five minute 4K project open, the same clip here, but we have some color correction applied. I have a LUT applied onto here and some film grain. So I'll, let's go ahead and just hit the space bar. I have it set up to the better quality. So this is full 4K being played back here. And as far as smoothness, I mean, both of them are looking pretty good. And now let's export this five minute 4K project with effects. I'm using the web browser preset in 4K. And after 22 seconds, we're already at 95, 99 degrees Celsius. Where's the MacBook Air? 72, the fans are idling. So yeah, we're, we're seeing a, a good trend here. <laughs> So it's been pretty much five minutes and the MacBook Pro is at 52%, whereas this MacBook Air is at 26%. So basically, if for video editing, the MacBook Pro is twice as slow once you actually get into it and are doing some heavier stuff. For short bursts, excellent, very good. But for long stuff, I mean, we could see right here, it's, it's literally 30%, 60% at a five and a half minutes. It's not worth it. So I'm gonna cancel this. <laughs> if you guys wanna see me testing out some 1080p video editing and maybe a couple other scenarios, that video will be in the video description. Uh, but I don't wanna be sitting here waiting this much longer. So let's finish up this video, guys. And which one of these would I recommend as the best value? First off, the MacBook Air definitely surprised me. The fact that the single core score was 26% higher than this one is excellent. And the multi-core score was 22% lower, not as big of a difference as I was expecting in that kind of regard. And for regular tasks, regular productivity apps, web usage, email, typing, that kind of stuff, this will actually be snappier 
here day to day. Not only that, but the battery life is also better. Now, Apple doesn't give a big difference. I think they rate this at 11 hours compared to 10, but in my usage, I would say for kind of medium loads, not just video playback, you're gonna get maybe two hours better. I would say at least two. I mean, right now, just looking at the battery life during the test, this thing fared way better, even under load. So that is excellent. Of course, the keyboard is excellent. Um, the shape of the body is great for typing. So for those people that are doing regular tasks, like uh, simple productivity, emails, web use, the stuff that this machine was designed for, this is even better than it's ever been before because it now has way more performance for those regular usages. Now, unfortunately, if you're gonna be putting them under heavy load, say 4K video editing that's extended, gaming, it cannot keep up because of thermals. And in that situation, the MacBook Pro is still the king, even though it's definitely weaker in terms of graphics. Now, the display is better here. It's brighter, the speakers sound better. And for different things like photo editing, video video editing, stuff like that. You're gonna want the better color accuracy and the much better cooling performance. So I'll have links to both down in the video description below. There are some great deals on the MacBook Pro as well that brings it closer to the MacBook Air's price. You guys can go and check that out. Thank you guys for watching. Click that circle above to subscribe. And if you wanna see some other videos on the MacBook Air, we'll have them right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.